Now we're ready to work on H6. And H6 is a modified block for the English paper piecing. And what they've done is, all I've done is added a seam here, right here, to break this up into two parts so it's easier to piece. So we've got all of these inside and outside curve pieces going on in different angles. So I've got all of my stuff laid out right here. All of my arrows are pointing in the same direction to make sure that my fabric is going to look the same no matter where it is on my block. So I'm going to base these with my notched curve method. I'm going to base these on the outside using my gathering stitch. I'm going to glue baste all of these other edges um, the normal way. And I'm probably going to assemble this inside out. So I'm going to assemble these in the middle here and then use this as a unit and this as a unit so it's easier to see on here. So I will assemble these, this middle bit, and then I will do this in one piece, this in one piece, and so this middle section will be my row right here. And then I will treat this as another row, you know, assemble these and then add, make this one big row and the same here, and then attach the rows. All right, so I basted all my notched pieces, uh, glued basted them, notched them, and then I wrapped them around, and I wrapped the ends after I did the curve. So when I did these pieces, I did the inside curve, then the ends, and then the straight sides. And I only notched it once instead of twice like I did on here. So it looks a little bit more L-shaped than curvy. This, And I can fix that when I go to stitch it. Um, this one is a lot more curvy because it's got two notches and I did it first. So next I'm going to baste these only as I only these pieces as I need them because these have my arrows and I want to make sure that I know which one goes where so I'm gonna attach these to their counterparts in little squares and then make up the units as I go okay so I've attached my corners to the middle and I will remove this basting once I've finished attaching these to the other ones just to make sure that these edges aren't affected at all which they shouldn't be but I'm gonna just wait anyway and then I'm gonna get these pieces together here I put these individual units together this one's taped this one's basted and I'm gonna then tape these together because this is this section right here and then what I've done is I've then taken it, because this is the middle and this is here, so I've then taken this bit and I've attached this part to the other side, so this will be like this. So I've attached this to this side and I'll make this one big row. And then I will assemble this row and this row and attach it to the middle. So it's starting to come together pretty well. So I got my middle row all made, ready to go. So that's all set. And then I've taken these two bits and basted those together. And those are going to be the top middle section here. And notice this is where the, the um, fabric direction starts to make a big deal. So that the fact that I had all my arrows the right way, all of this fabric is going to line up exactly the right way. So I'm going to attach the ends to this attach these ends right like so and then I'm going to attach this to this row and I've already made my bottom row and not that it matters but my words are different so so I've got I got to finish assembling my top row I've already assembled my bottom row and then I'm just gonna sew these both together and my h6 block will be completed now I run into a little bit of a snag here, but it's easily fixable, but I wanted to point it out. When I go to attach my 
pieced bit to my single square. You see I have this giant overlap or this my um, beast bit is because it's on a curve and because this is the one that I really screwed up the the cloth. This is when I cut in the middle rather than the two sides. It's real misshapen. So I've lined up the bottom and I'm going to attach this bottom part to about where that seam allowance is. So what I'm going to do at the top here is then I'm going to push this to line up with that and when I do that this little pop, the seam will pop up from the flat. I'm not sure if you can see that right there. So it'll pop up more the more I push on it like a little tent. And how I can correct that is because I want to make sure that these ends are in the same location. So I'm going to force that by sewing them right there. And then I'm going to have a little tent in the back. But what I do then is I will take it and try to compensate with that with my um, piecing or my seaming, excuse me, however you want to say that. And so what I'm going to do is and when I connect these two pieces right here, I'm when I'm going to go down to this point and this, I'm going to kind of pull this down in so that this pulls this down, but this piece, I'm going to pull this above it. So it's going to be like a little X here. And what that's going to do is it's going to pull this piece on this side of the seam that way and this piece on this side of the seam this way. And so effectively it's going to minimize that space because this is where your growth is. Your growth is in that hole. So that's how you eliminate that is you squish it by doing that little X technique. And so then I'm going to be able to make it look a lot better. It's not always perfect, but it's a lot better. See, I did the same thing here and here. So, and it was the exact same thing. It was a little poochy up there and you just work it in and you're good to go. So I'm attaching my very last seam on this square and I've come up against an interesting issue that I wanted to point out. I have, um, I have sewn past this joint to here and then I came over here and I sewn and I got to this point and these still were not lining up even as I pushed them. So what I've done is I've tied off and I'm going to squeeze this together here and line up my white and my brown parts right here. And I think I'm going to do this right here on this side because I've got more room to maneuver on this side than that side. So what that's going to do is guarantee that I've got these exactly where I have, that I need them because otherwise if I don't do that, right now it's, it's not lined up right. And so it'll, you know, right now it's, a little off here and with the fact that this is such a dark fabric and such a light fabric it's blatantly obvious but if I can just do this my take up I can do my little X maneuver here and my take up will be all right but I need to make sure that this hits here and this hits here and if I do that I can do that I didn't have any issues over here but I've got issues over here and that's because of the way that I basted this and I had issues with the folding so let's see how that works out now my H6 block is complete. If I had to redo this again, I would say that when I go to baste my curvy pieces, the outside, these background pieces, I would be a little bit more careful with the way I did the outside edges because a lot of my outside edges have this flip up section which was problematic when I went to piece it together or when I went to assemble my rows and that's pretty much where I had my issues so just be very careful and this can probably be avoided if you base the inside curve then base the straightaways and then lastly do the little tiny bit on the outside I did the little tiny bit on the outside first after I did my curve so that would be second never mind um so I did my inside curve first, always, but I did the little tiny bits before I did the outside, and if I had to do it over again, I would do the tiny bits last so that it would guarantee that this was a straight line. 